Hi, I'm Gary Plattner. I'm a principal exterior level designer on World of Warcraft. And I'm Taryn Gregory, cinematic project director for Blizzard Animation. Oh yeah, I That's mean, exciting. it was very exciting. From the moment uh, that Warbringers cinematic went live in game, uh, we knew. <laughs> we were we were prepared. We uh, we were looking forward to the release of Old Soldier on Thursday, and we were expecting a very strong, you know, enthusiastic reaction from the fans. And it was it was beyond our, you know. I was going to say, did right? you really know? I no, mean, no, no. We, we, we knew there was going to be a reaction, but holy cow. The reaction yeah. was bigger than we'd imagined, and but for us, you know, we, we take away a huge positive because what we see there is passion. Right? We see yeah. people that are incredibly passionate about our story, that are incredibly invested in these characters that they've uh, lived and breathed and played with for 14 years, and nothing short of that could cause anyone to be as passionate as we've seen about this product and this narrative over the last week. Yeah. Uh, right. And it was really exciting to see how, as we bit our teeth for a second and an old, <laughs> old soldier came out on Thursday seeing how the, the full picture started to bend the narrative in another way um, it's been a wild ride for sure but again we just we just love how how enthusiastic the players are more about. to come too. yeah <laughs> we're just at the beginning but it was exciting because you only hope for this sort of reaction because we're sort of having it ourselves and then I kept watching all of these review movies you know them people watching and it's emotional, yeah. and it and it feels, I don't want to say good, but it does feel satisfying mm -hmm. that that we've been able to elicit such emotion, you know, from from our game. We were hoping it would be it would be subtle, but that it would be deep, yep. you know, that that would be cerebral, you know, uh, and it worked. The company ethos is create the most epic experiences mm -hmm. ever. Uh, Blizzard Animation, we want to make you feel something. Um, because feeling is the basis of all storytelling, and that's going to yeah. include a wide gamut of emotions. You know, from from love to outrage to uh, anger to a, a catharsis, relief, elation. All everything's on the table. And in fact, when you're carving a narrative, it is so important to have the peaks and valleys, because without the valleys, the peaks are never as high, and without the peaks, the valleys are never as low. I don't know that we're drawing any intentional parallels. Uh, Alex Afrasiabi, our creative director uh, back at Blizzard, he always says, it is our number one goal to try to craft the most cogent and enticing narrative we can. And we let that narrative take us where we, where we go. You know, as we write it, you know, even w though we're ahead of the game, right? We want the narrative to be unencumbered by, well, we can't do X or Y. No, 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 at that point, you're not making the best story you can make. Just to take a moment of reflection upon the history of the Horde, right? Like in this expansion, we're going deep into the conflict of alliance versus Horde, all that they mean to come to blows together after all the terrible things that one faction has done to the other and vice versa throughout all of their history. And that's all of their history, not just World of Warcraft's history, right? Most, for the most part, people are very familiar with World of Warcraft's history in terms of the conflict between the Alliance and the Horde. But this is laundry going back to Warcraft 3, Warcraft 2, Warcraft 1. And throughout the, that course, I think I heard someone say, there's been six war chiefs? Mm -hmm. There's been six war chiefs throughout the course of the Horde. Um, and so to say, well, this one time with Garrosh, it's like, Actually, it's something that's happened to the Horde a lot, and yeah. it, it, I think it's very telling, actually, that the, the history of its people, I think, is mired in, in conflict and mired in uh, what is our identity? What are we trying to do on this world? How do we survive? Um, and I think that's going to be very much ground for how we continue to tell the story. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think when it comes to Sylvanas, the most important part for us uh, as storytellers at Blizzard is that she remains internally consistent. Uh, whatever character that is, you know, w what has come before, what was her experience, what created her, what forged her in the fires of whatever made her what she is, 
Um, and from where I stand, looking upon what we're trying to cr uh, create, um, we're doing our best to stay true to that, you know, making her character internally, in in <laughs> internally consistent. Um, because much like the narrative as far as like, are we worried about this being duplicious or that, if we were doing anything other than staying true to Sylvanas' mm -hmm. own heart, own motivations, we'd be doing her actually a disservice, especially if it was in the motivation of exterior goals. Um, that's just the way I feel about that. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, we're just illustrating a narrative that was there, that was, that was, that was already part of her, and we're just sort of revealing that. And I, for one, am thankful, actually, that there's such a, a, uh, a connection that people have been feeling to, to, to her and to, well, to most of the, of the characters and to the cinematics especially. Yeah, and we, it feels... We should be thankful that we were, we were able to get that. And our cinematics are, are just a, another tool we can use for storytelling, mm -hmm. along with creating the zones and uh, creating our in-game cinematics. And it's just all storytelling. Yep. And it feels even online like there's a Sylvanas that half the fan base knows and there's a Sylvanas that the other half <laughs> that they, of the fan base knows. Or and, that they want. <laughs> or, but, and, you know, I won't say that, but like, which one is the real one, right? Like, yeah, you're just getting we, to know. We have to just let the story mm -hmm. be what it is. Um, oh, I love and it. And tell, tell the story, the best story it's we exciting. can. Yeah. I think Blizzard started putting its foot into the transmedia game uh, with Overwatch. And as they saw that being incredibly successful throughout its comic book releases, its short series, 2.5D animation, character origin stories, any number of things, uh, building out that world before even the game had been released, people were already enamored and in love with this world. Um, given that Blizzard Animation, uh, creative development, and uh, story and franchise development are one building containing the people that are working on this, of course we would take notice and want to apply the lessons learned from Overwatch to World of Warcraft. And I feel that Battle for Azeroth is really the culmination of that. I think we'd started in Legion, mm -hmm. but Battle for Azeroth was the one that, from its seed inception of a concept, before it was ever on, even on a, a whiteboard, right? We knew yeah. this is how we wanted to approach this story. And resultingly, we ha always had in mind that the comics and the books and the gameplay and the in-game cinematic and the 2.5D animations all need to be very, very closely woven together, mm -hmm. tell one cogent story, um, try not to put too much of the critical information outside of the more game-centric ones, instead use those mediums as more of the, for further reading, see, you know? Um, and for the most part, so far, we're not even all the way to launch yet, but it seems that the reception yeah. to the cadence of the interconnected content has been very positive. And it's very um, heartening for us because we have really enjoyed creating this cogent narrative uh, as we jump between perspectives of Jaina, Sylvanas, uh, Sarfang, and, and Zakan slash Zappy Boy. <laughs> um, and just been having a wonderful time of it. So. Well, this kind of storytelling is just the sort of thing we've been working on perfecting really. Uh, uh, like you mentioned, you, you were right on. The way we incorporate our storytelling within our cinematics to 2.5D, even our in-game cinematics, to our fully rendered CG, to what's happening in the game is all fully realized. And you're talking about hundreds of people that are involved with making all of these different aspects of, of, of game dev uh, coming together and, and it's just culminating and working so smoothly uh, in this latest expansion. Mm -hmm. It's really fun to see this working. And it's working. Because you never have that confirmation until it's, things start to happen. And, and this is probably the best lead up to a, a launch that uh, I think we could ever hope for. Story-wise, it really feels like it's firing and also under. Well, a story is super important to us. Everything we do is story. How we build everything is based on, a, on the story of a character or a or a culture or, or whatever, everything we do, mm -hmm. from the cities to the smallest little item. There's a story behind how things are built, the materials they're built of and why they're even made. And everything is related all the way up to giant, you know, fully rendered CG movies, which, which now just mesh so well together mm -hmm. into, into a cohesive player experience. Yeah.
Well, I'm sure Terry will talk <laughs> a lot about that. But really quick, cinematics are another tool that we can use for storytelling beyond what we can do in the game. So it's a great asset to have his team and, and the whole creative dev team help us along with the certain moments that you can't do in the game and that you can do in cinematics or we can do it two and a half D mm -hmm. or whatever the medium we choose uh, to work under. Yep. Uh, it's been a couple, couple years now uh, since Chris Metzen's departure from Blizzard Entertainment. Um, a lot of us took that very hard, right? Uh, the community I'm, as well, but like for, the, for, for some of us that actually uh, worked somewhat consistently, it was, it was a big blow. But the way that internally uh, things have rallied around and really healed, healed ourselves uh, with his absence has actually created some really uh, stellar, stellar opportunities for us to, to tell stories a little bit differently. Uh, one thing that has shifted is in creative development, we brought on board a man named um, George Kirstick, and he is now our head of story in creative development, and he has created a space that he calls the writer's room, or Alex Afrasiabi uh, lovingly referred to as the dojo, <laughs> because of the reverent nature of when we're in this room, um, you know, this is where we treat story with utmost respect, you know, all ideas, no one's gonna get torn down for doing something silly or off, you know, uh, off the wall and it's in that room that we started really beating up the stories for um, the Harbinger or the Warbringers for the in-game cinematics for how do we support the grand narrative of World of Warcraft through these tertiary mediums that exist outside the, the primary uh, game team and it was in there with the addition of Christy Golden who came on board and has been working side by side with me on all of the in-game cinematics for the, over a year now. Um, and we've, we've devved pretty much every in-game story together in concert with all the feedback and support from the story room that we have. And I think that that in, in its essence has promoted a lot of the tighter crossplay between the different mediums because in that room is also the author who is wor the working editor mm -hmm. on the comics. And they'll see some, oh, they're doing that, I need to go talk to the poet, you know? <laughs> Which you think, that you've always done that, but logistically it's challenging to keep appraised of like, right. like what you were right. saying, when there's a hundred parallel pipelines, mm -hmm. maintaining consistency across, but this has done so much mm -hmm. to level up this, con oh, you guys are doing that? Oh, mm -hmm. we're gonna do this too. Oh, you're doing that, we're gonna do this too. And then mm -hmm. it plays off each other, mm -hmm. and then it starts to feel like this incredibly cogent narrative. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think that's one part of it that definitely contributes toward that. Well, I feel like it's always the same with every expansion. I've, I'm always proud of the last expansion we've done, and then we've always want to try to like, hey, what's what's different? What's uh, I don't want to say better, but I just want to we want to try how do to we level it up, top ourselves. Yeah, how we, we want to do, do something time. different. Yeah, every expansion is a new opportunity to do anything. Mm -hmm. the sky's the limit, so mm -hmm. that's what's fun. I always said my favorite part of working on an expansion is the very beginning when anything goes. <laughs> and then at the end when everything has come together, hopefully, or worked out or sometimes not worked out or <laughs> has it done with this one, which is just brilliant, uh, uh, I, I love those moments. Uh, um, uh, it's, it's The creativity never stops. People always ask how, how it's to work on a game for so long, you know, but it's not like working on the same game. It's literally a different product every time. Our tech is different, our tools are better. Uh, what's around the corner is always like, oh, I can't wait. I'm as big a fan of everyone else. I'm, I'm crying with those people too and they're watching the videos. I'm like, oh, I can't believe they're crying, I'm crying too. This is so good. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a roller coaster mm -hmm. of, of uh, emotion. Because I've always been there with that sort of emotion and every expansion has meant a lot to me. And, and then you only hope it is for players too. And then when you see, you get that confirmation every now and then, yep. you know, and you're like, uh oh, they feel it too. Yes. I do too, because it's my life, you know, and it's, well, it's our players as well. So we're all in it together. I, I think story-wise, you know, there, there's a natural flow and order to the expansions over the years uh, that you can look to like Cataclysm. Cataclysm was the first time that when we faced Deathwing, Destroyer, uh, the ender of the world, you know, that was just such a grand, oppressive threat 
Yeah. Like, what do you do next, right? You can't go bigger, darker, you yeah, know, right. more evil. <laughs> um, so what did we do after that Miss of Pandera? Talk about a contrast, right? Going mm. from blackened heart of burning earth to the Ch Chinese, you know, mm -hmm. countryside and yeah. <sighs> breath of fresh air, right? And, yeah. and then it progressively got darker and, and then we arrived at Sargeras, burnt destroyer of worlds. And we do that, like, okay, how do we, where do we go from here? <laughs> and really, it was very intuitive, I think. Um, to well, there's bring, so to many stories down, to tell. You bring know? it down to the yeah. terrestrial level, right? Bring it back down to humanities rather than, like, <laughs> the enemy as big as the horizon. No, 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 yeah. bring it down. Yeah. Contrast, comparison, breath, relax. Allow the content to feel new and fresh. And, um, but I don't think we ever think of it as a competition between what's better or worse than another one. No, it's, just a, it's just another there's a cadence. It's an, it's, yeah, it's another chapter. It's another version that, that, we, get to, that we get to creatively express. Mm -hmm. you know, that's the challenge. Well, we branch off how things work. There's different teams can work on different parts as it goes. Uh, but everybody still has that cohesive vision in mind. Um, we've, we've been lucky over the years that we've built the team in a way that can tackle all of these branches and all of these uh, the production challenges. And I feel like we've really perfected that because we've been doing this for a while. And, uh, and, and this cadence feels good for us. So it's we don't really think about it too much of which sort of branch we call it that that we're hitting on and who's mm -hmm. doing which which thing and uh, we have enough people to, to cover all of that and uh, um, I don't know it's really it's it's not as big of an sort of an issue that, that you would think uh, um, uh, I don't know what else to add it's, it's just I think in every expansion uh, and even every patch we try hmm. we learn right and we yeah. adapt every, every single time um, and I think maybe that the patch cadence that we arrived in on Legion didn't come out of nowhere. It's not like, oh, they finally figured it. No, no, no. You know, look at the previous expansions. They tried yeah. it this way. Yeah. And then, oh, you know what? If we, if, we, if we could start this over, we would do it this way. And then we do that in the next expansion. And at the end of that expansion, oh, man, if we could start this expansion over, we'd do it what this if, way. And, then, and finally, I, I believe that just enough iteration, just enough tr times of ad adapting yeah. our process, adapting our way of yeah. doing things, Legion struck something very, very special. And now that we have that, we'll definitely yeah, we're we want to capitalize continue. on that, continue to improve, embellish, and you know, yeah. make it, because the players are clearly very happy with the cadence of content from Legion, and we want to continue to provide that. Sorry, but what did we say the other day? Working on WoW is a lot like playing WoW. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the same sort of thing. We start a new project. We're not really sure how things are going to go. We, we have an, an idea for what, yeah. Mid-game. There's we, a boss we coming. We level up the game as we develop it, yeah. and the challenges get harder and harder toward things the end of development. Things didn't go the way we wanted to. Until okay. we finally reach, Adapt. oh, the final yeah. week, mythic mode, yeah. deliver the product. It's, and then we're all like, world first, battle for we Azeroth, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah! yeah, it's exactly that. Playing it and working on it, it's the same thing. Love it. Yeah. We do everything uh, without thinking there is an end in sight. <laughs> we, we do everything completely sustainable. We want to know what the next thing is going to be, we're, we're always, the, well, we're all, everything we make, we, we think, well, that's the end, and we're doing this one thing, oh, then we'll change it, well, this is the 100%. Everything we do is done with the sense that, oh, this is good, yeah. and, and we'll ship it. As, as far as cadence, um, we'll, we'll continue to always be aspiring to what feels right. Yeah. You know, if, if it feels right to do it this way, we'll absolutely do it. If, if for other reasons um, something comes up, and you, know, you know what, it would be better for the game, better for the players, better for yeah. the product, if, if it was more like this, yeah. We, we never want to feel like we've arrived at a magic formula and it's going to work every time because that's not the reality of any type of development, let alone game development. Yeah, and even right. if it was a magic formula that worked, we wouldn't <laughs> want to do it again. We right. want to do something different. You Try know? to challenge ourselves to right. do it better, but yeah. it's always trying to do what's best in service of the best experience we can provide. Yeah, so. yep, yep.
for this expansion, uh, I love the uh, Boralus, the 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 Kalterian city. The fidelity of that city just blows me away. I couldn't believe how good it looks, how much detail is there, and and how much we can pull off in this game mm -hmm. that's 15 years old. It's gorgeous. Well, both uh, um, uh, uh, both continents are unbelievably good. I'm super proud of it. How far you can see, how much detail there is. It's incredible. It it it's. It's a, it's a thing that we were always hoping for, this, this sort of uh, uh, fidelity, this sort of look, you know? It's uh, emotional. I think for me, it's probably the, um, the twin stories, you know? It was, it was the most challenging and rewarding and just engaging. Mm -hmm. The fact that the Horde and Alliance for the first time are, you know, <laughs> split in their intentions and arrive in two locations with two goals, with two uh, you know, end games by which once they reach, boom, then clash an all-out war. And it was in developing those, those twin stories. Um, we'd never done before in that, that level of extreme. And it really pushed us to try, like, oh, okay, this really has to speak to the soul of what's mm -hmm. going on in this continent. This really has to speak to the soul of what's going on in this continent. And it came, gave us kind of a, um, a free pass because mm -hmm. in the past, we've kind of had to play more middle of the ground. It had, to, it had to service multiple perspectives simultaneously. But this was like, no, what if we just went all the way down the rabbit hole on both? Mm -hmm. And that was hard because you'd be working on this one and then you have to switch gears over to this one. <laughs> and you're like, whoa. But ultimately, we got to tell so much more good, as yeah. a result of this structure. And I found it incredibly rewarding. And I really hope that the players find yeah. the, the individual narratives of the Alliance and Horde compelling and play both sides or at least peek at both sides story because there's a lot there. It's very cerebral, <laughs> very subtle, but very powerful.